Welcome to virtual math class, all of you eighth grade mathematicians. Today we are going to be solving two-step equations. And our objective today is that students will be able to solve two-step equations using all operations. So we will be using addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division today to solve different types of two-step equations. Jumping right on in, our first one is 5 minus x equals 10. You may be thinking to yourself, but wait, Miss Price, this looks like a one-step equation. It's not. So, I look at my side, the side of my equal sign, with my variable, and that is 5 minus x. So, I need to get rid of what's not with x first. So, if I have 5 minus x, what's not x is 5. And that 5 right now is positive or negative. If I'm just looking at the 5, that 5 is positive. So I'm going to start the opposite of positive would be negative. So I'm going to start by subtracting 5 on both sides. When I do that, if I have 5 minus 5, that cancels out. So on this side, I have negative x equals what is 10 minus 5? That's 5. Now, this tells me what negative x equals. It does not tell me what x equals. So, I, this is, what this means is like there would be an, a negative 1x here is essentially what that is. So, if I have a number and a variable together, that means I'm multiplying. So, from this step, I'm going to divide by negative 1. And what is negative 1 divided by negative 1? That cancels out. It's just 1. So I would have x equals, what is 5 divided by negative 1? Negative 5. Now, if I have 5 minus negative 5, does that equal 10? Well, if I have a negative minus a negative, or, yeah, minus negative, that turns to plus positive. So then I would have 10 equals 10. And, well, that's right. So always check yourself. Now, these ones are a little easier. So, I have 4x plus 2 equals 18. I draw my line down my equal sign. So, my goal again is to get rid of what is not with x. So, right now, this 4 and the x are together. So, I'm going to do that second because first I need to get rid of what's not with x, which would be 2. So, I have plus 2. So, I'm going to start by subtracting 2 on both sides. So now I have positive 2 minus 2. That cancels out. So now I bring down my 4x. So now I have 4x equals, what is 18 minus 2? 16. So now I have 4x. When I have a 4 and an x together, that means I'm multiplying. So the inverse operation will be what? Dividing. So I divide both sides by 4. So 4 divided by 4, well, that's just 1. So I'm left with x equals what is 16 divided by 4? Four? 4. Now if I plug that back in, if I plug that back in, I would have 4 times 4 plus 2 equals 18. Well, 4 times 4, we know that that's 16. So then I would have 16 plus 2 equals 18. 16 plus 2 equals 18. So I have 18 equals 18. Well, that checks out. Remember, check yourself before you wreck yourself. Now, I have 7x minus 5 equals 30. So, I draw my line down, my equal sign. I look at where my variable lies at. My variable is with 7. So, I know that I need to get rid of that last. But what isn't with x, but that's still on the same side of x, is this minus 5. So, the inverse of subtracting is addition. So, I'm going to start by adding 5 to both sides. And I have a negative 5 plus 5, so that cancels out. So all I'm left with on this side of the equal sign is 7x equals 30 plus 5 is 35. So now I have 7 and x. Those two are together. That means I'm multiplying. So I divide because division is the inverse operation of multiplication. 7 divided by 7 is 1, so I'm left with x equals, what is 35 divided by 7? That's 5. 
So now if I plug this back in, I have seven times five minus five equals 30. So now I do seven times five. Well, that's 35. And then I minus five equals 30. 35 minus five, well, that's 30. So if I get the 30 equals 30, then boom, got it right, good job. Now, I have four X minus negative eight equals 24. This one's a little tricky because I'm minus negative. And whenever I have minus, ne minus a negative, remember that turns to plus positive. So really, I could rewrite this as 4x plus 8 equals 24, right? Right. So now, I start by subtracting 8. Because remember, I get rid of the furthest thing from x first. So positive 8 minus 8, well, that cancels out. And I'm just left with 4x on this side. And what is 24 minus 8? That's 16. Now I divide both sides by 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1. So I'm left with x equals, and what is 16 divided by 4? Well, that's 4. Now let's check and see. If I plug 4 in for x, I would have 4 times 4 minus negative 8 equals 24. Well, 4 times 4? Well, that's 16. So now I have 16 minus negative. We said we, that turns to positive. So 16 plus 8. Does 16 plus 8 equal 24? Absolutely. Good job, guys. So now we get into more of division. So I have x divided by 4 plus 8 equals 5. Draw my line down my equal sign. So now I have x, in, x divided by 4. That's together, so I need to get rid of this plus 8 first. So if I have plus 8, the inverse is going to be subtracting. So I subtract 8 on both sides. So now I have plus 8 minus 8, boom, cancels out. So I'm left with x over 4 equals, what is 5 minus 8? 5 minus 8 is negative 3. Now, x over 4, that means I'm dividing. So I am going to multiply and I show that by just putting it in parentheses. Now, if I have 4 times x divided by 4, boom, cancels out, and all I'm left with is x. Now, if I have negative 3 times 4, well, 3 times 4 is 12, but I have a negative 3 times a positive 4, so that would be a negative 12. So x equals negative 12. So now let's check ourselves. So I have negative 12 divided by 4 plus 8, and I need to see if that equals 5. Well, negative 12 divided by 8 is negative 3. So if I have negative 3 plus 8, negative 3 plus 8, does it equal 5? Yes, it does. Good job. In this example, I have x over 8 plus 2 equals 3. I draw my line down. So again, with this one, I have x and 8. That's together. x over 8 is together. That's one thing. So I start by, I have plus 2, so I'm going to start by subtracting 2. When I subtract 2 on both sides, I have a positive 2 minus 2. That cancels out, and I am left with x over 8 equals, what is 3 minus 2? 1. So now I have x over 8 equals 1. That's, being div that's division that's happening. So if I see division, I do multiplication, which I show by parentheses. That cancels out. So I am left with x equals, what is 1 times 8? Eight? 8. So now let's check ourselves. So does 8 divided by 8 plus 2 equal 3 equal 3? Well, 8 divided by 8 is 1. So does 1 plus 2 equal 3? That one's pretty obvious. Yes, it does. Okay, this one looks super hard, but I promise it's not. So I have x plus 2 divided by 3 equals five. Draw my line down my equal sign first. So remember how I say that you get rid of what is furthest from x first. Well, on top, this x plus two is together. So I need to start by getting rid of this divided by three. So if I get rid of that first, if I'm dividing by three, the inverse is going to be to multiply by three. So I multiply by three on both sides. When I multiply by 3 on both sides, that cancels out because I would have 3 divided by 3, and that equals 1. 
So then on this side, I got rid of my denominator now, or that um, bottom part of my fraction. So now I just have x plus 2 equals, what is 5 times 3? 15. So I have x plus 2 equals 15. Well, now I see addition, so I do subtraction. The inverse, 2 minus 2, well, that's nothing, so it cancels out. So now I have x equals, what is 15 minus 2? 13. So x equals 13. How I do how I check this one is I plug in. So I have 13 plus 2 divided by 3 equals 5. So I start by doing what's on top. So 13 plus 2 is 15. So now I have 15 divided by 3 equals 5. Does 15 divided by 3 equals 5? Yes, it does. So whenever you see a problem like this, and it looks big and scary. It's not. Start by getting rid of that bottom number. So you're going to start by multiplying by whatever number is on bottom, and then you have a simple one-step equation, and this should be pretty straightforward. I know that this video was long, and I apologize for that, but this is so, so, so important that we understand this.